So here we are in northern New South Wales, Australia, just on our 10 acre property. Uh, we're just outside of Kyogle. And as you can see behind me, we have a really steep slope uh, on our property. And we're wondering what to do with it um, to help stabilize the soil. So if you've studied permaculture at all and looked into swales, so swales are basically ditches on contour to help uh, slow the flow of water off the, off the landscape and help it soak in um, and help establish trees. So if your uh, land is greater than a 15 degree slope, um, adding swales can actually end up destabilizing the soil, potentially leading to landslips. Um, so this is what we were faced with. And so I came up with this system as a fantastic alternative to try and have the same effect as swales with slowing that rainfall runoff, helping it soak into the soil, but without the earthworks. Um, so as you can see, we've got tree rows here. Now there's several functions for these. These are acting at the moment as fantastic wildlife corridors for our kangaroos. Um, and we've also got a lot of uh, bird life nesting in there as well. But in these uh, grass rows, we've actually got all of our native species getting established. So because we're in a tropic, subtropical zone where we suffer from frosts and also scorching uh, summer days and uh, droughts as well, um, it was really important to work out how to protect the young trees uh, when I didn't have the funds to purchase thousands of tree guards and tree stakes. Um, so the grass rows uh, have acted as an amazing alternative. They're providing frost protection in winter and in summer they're providing much needed shade so that my young seedlings don't burn and die in the scorching heat. And it's also a very exposed uh, hill as well. So the grass rows help create that windbreak. Uh, so it's proven to be a really fantastic system. So we'll go for a walk now and I'll take you for a closer look just to show you the tree planting plans and um, how I've been able to establish this uh, forest system with no irrigation whatsoever. So let's go take a look. So now that we're at the top of the hill, I'll go through some of the key species that I've used, uh, show you the effects of planting on contour, and also just discuss the planting plan as well um, to maximize your success rate. So let's have a look at some of the species. So if I discuss the planting plan, this was really uh, key to our success. So what I focused on is planting a lot of pioneer species. So this is an Acacia fimbriata, which is one of the absolute uh, key pioneers that I've used on our property. Uh, this has been in the ground, I propagated all of these from seed and this has been in the ground two years now and you can see that growth. Um, the other advantage too is looking at this acacia, if you have a look on the ground here you can see the shade. So just getting quick established shade makes such a difference to reducing the effects of evaporation and trying to uh, help maintain moisture in the system. So we'll go for a bit of a wander now. So you can see there's an Acacia fimbriata. They're just finishing flowering actually. So I'm really looking forward to collecting a heap of seed off these and propagating them. Next, I've got a rainforest tree. So you can see underneath the leaf here, it's white. This is either a red or a pink ash, which is uh, endemic to this area. So Northern New South Wales, Southeast Queensland. Then we've got another eucalypt species. So all of these eucalypts, not only are they hardwood timber species. So if we did need timber, once these get up, they may need some thinning out, but they're also really important koala trees as well. And that was after the devastating bushfires in Australia, I really wanted to create um, a long-term koala habitat. Next, we've got a white cedar. Now these are actually uh, native to this region and also deciduous. So you can see now that spring's here, it's got this flush of new growth and white cedars are super hardy. So all of my rainforest species that I've chosen had to be pretty drought tolerant, flood tolerant, and ideally frost tolerant as well. So as we start wandering through the system, you can start seeing the planting pattern. So here we've got our Acacia fimbriata. Next to it here, we've actually got a plum pine. So you can see, I've just because it's a young tree, I've just got it protected. But what I do do on a regular basis is I come and clear the grass directly around the trunk so that there's less competition. And then I use this grass as mulch 
to help maintain moisture. And another thing you have to be careful of too is these twining vines. Uh, often they'll start twining around my young seedlings and start choking them. So I just take a little knife and go for a lovely nature walk and I'll just uh, help clear some of the grass and some of the twining vines from the young trees. So then we come back to another eucalypt species. So this is another koala, uh, koala food. Uh, and then we've got red cedar. So red cedar, uh, this area of um, around Kyogle was famous for its red cedar. And sadly, all of the red cedar was logged um, and it was all turned into agricultural land and uh, dairy and beef country. So it's a really beautiful thing to be able to put some of these original species back in on our land. Um, and then we're back to the acacia. So you can see either side of this acacia, we've got a rainforest tree and another rainforest species in here. Some of the other hardy rainforest species that we've got, we've got a brown currajong here. And again, now that spring's here, it's putting on some nice growth. And this is a good example here too. So I'll come by with a knife and help to untangle this vine from the young seedling. And uh, back to a eucalypt. And then here we've got the Australian teak. So this is a beautiful um, native species and also an amazing hardwood timber. So you can start seeing as well, this is a standout pioneer. This is the, an acacia, it's a blackwood. So these have just shot off like rockets. I'd say these are one of the most successful uh, trees we've planted. And again, that young red cedar underneath, it's providing much needed shelter. So I can't stress the importance enough when you're getting your uh, forest systems established, establishing those really hardy pioneers um, for me anyway has just been the key to our success here and because they're shading the soil um, and providing protection to the young trees I haven't needed to irrigate. Um, so talking to about irrigation and timing of your plantings I made sure that um, when we planted out this system um, we were at the, on the tail end of a, one of the worst droughts in history, but I looked at the long-term forecast and they were expecting really uh, wet conditions. So I actually planted this uh, just before the wet season started or at the beginning of the wet season. So that way I was utilizing the, uh, the seasons to my advantage and not having to worry about trying to cart water up this really steep slope. Um, and one of the things I've noticed too, isn't this magnificent, all the different species of eucalypt, the new growth, you'll have, um, this is actually purple, uh, you'll have yellows, lime greens, uh, all the colours of the sunset, um, so really beautiful actually. Um, and then you can see here again the effect of this shade. And coming into this grass, you can imagine as we get the really heavy downpours and that rainwater is just sheeting off the hill, this barrier here really slows that rainfall and helps it soak into the ground. And as these pioneer species are getting up, I'll start pruning these at the start of the wet season. And that means because there's um, now some shelter for these young trees, I'll be able to start eliminating all of this grass. And uh, if you think of a paddock scenario, um, when you've got grass and pasture, there are the next door neighbor's cows down there actually, um, you've got a bacterial system. So a forest system is naturally a fungal system. So over time, we've got to transition this grass into leaf mulch and they're going to support our target species, which is the uh, rainforest species through this system. So looking next door is a great example as well of, you can see just how steep it is. Now we're in our um, dry season at the moment, so there hasn't been a lot of rain. And unfortunately with the cattle not having much feed, they've actually grazed it back to bare soil on these really steep slopes. So what happens now when we get a really heavy downpour, all of that topsoil is washing straight down um, into the flats and silting up a lot of our streams and things like this. So um, it's really important when you've got steep property. Um, I like to think anything greater than uh, kind of a 12 degree slope should be under permanent cultivation with trees. Um, this really helps uh, stabilize the soil. Um, and one thing we noticed as well, because our property was all cattle country as well, even though we have a beautiful uh, clay loam, um, 
if you dig into the soil, when we're digging in to plant all of these trees, the topsoil is really, really thin. So in the subtropics, the tropical climate, all of the biomass is held in the tree canopy and there's not a lot of soil. So it's not ideal to have, if there's gonna be uh, cattle grazing, uh, one of the concepts I love is the silver pasture. So you've got cattle grazing in amongst tree rows. So not only are you getting long-term timber species, another form of income for the farm, the cattle have got shelter and you're helping to really shelter the soils and preserve our topsoils, which is just so important. Another thing too, uh, seeing the corridors here, it just makes management of the system so much easier. Um, and just talking about mowers, we, uh, we bought a, it's called a Razorback mower. So if you're looking at mowing these sorts of systems, as you would know, it's very dangerous uh, mowing on contour because then it's very easy to roll the machine. So the machine we bought um, has a very, very low center of gravity. It actually looks like a go-kart. In this case, uh, with the Razorback mower, we can let this get up quite high. So allowing the grass to get up high means the roots are penetrating down to help decompact this former cow paddock. And also you're getting all that amazing organic matter being fed back into the soil. So we let the grass get up, uh, we slash, that's all mulch and then that again naturally collects. You can see here the grass starts naturally collecting along the edge. So by having the, um, these tree rows we've created kilometres and kilometres of edge uh, which just creates that incredible diversity between forest and a grassland system. So there you have it, that's our long-term timber and wildlife forest that's currently getting established. And as I said, over time with pruning the branches and laying them on contour, that's going to help to any runoff, any silt, um, help build up that topsoil on the slope. And hopefully in a few years, we'll have closed canopy and I'll be walking along the tree rows um, underneath the shade, so I can't wait. So feel free to like, subscribe and share, and I will actually be doing a series of videos showing exactly how to source the seed and how to propagate all of these amazing native species. Thanks for watching.